Hello and welcome to Getting to Know the Archdiocese. Uh, I'm Daniel Monastra and this is my co-host Royer. And we're joined today by Father Louis Monica. Um, Father Monica was ordained in 2020 and he is a parochial vicar at Saints Peter and Paul in Westchester. So Father, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. And welcome, welcome back to the seminary. Absolutely, thanks for the invitation. No problem, yeah. What, so what led you to the priesthood to start us off here? So, um, I always found that a, a difficult question to answer, um, especially when I was um, new here at St. Charles. I came right out of high school, uh, entered into first college, graduated from Father Judge, and that was in 2011. And uh, when I got here, started to hear different stories from uh, my classmates, from guys who were ahead of me in the seminary, and each one very different. Um, which made me start to think that mine was sort of boring uh, because <laughs> there was nothing really spectacular about it. Yeah. The short of it is um, I just always wanted to be a priest from as far back as I can remember. I can't pinpoint a specific moment or um, event that you know made me think, okay, I wonder if I could do that. It was simply always there, um, which over the years I've grown to sort of appreciate as, you know, in, in its simplicity, it is sort of miraculous because I don't really see where else um, that could have come from if it wasn't from, from God. So uh, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a priest. And just throughout the years, um, what I would say, there were moments of just affirmations of what was already in my heart that I felt. Um, I started to, to notice that when I was in high school, um, the relationships that I had with the priests who were at my parish as I was growing up, um, getting to learn from them, getting to see them and appreciate how the Lord was working through their lives and in, in their particular calling. Um, and also noticing how happy they were, uh, again, was sort of attractive to me. So um, it was always there, but then just as I got older, it never went away and it just continued to increase um, in my life, so. That's wonderful, yeah. Um, now that you are a priest though, and you've been a priest for over a year, um, what does a normal day look like for you, uh, especially as, you know, uh, recently ordained? Yeah, there are no normal days. <laughs> <laughs> so um, some days there's, there's not a whole lot going on, um, and, but it's a balance, you know, and then there are days that are, that are extremely busy um, where at the end of the day I'm, I'm definitely ready for bed and, yeah. <laughs> and exhausted. Uh, last week I had a really unusual day. There was, um, started out the same way again. After the 8.30 Mass, I had a baptism. This was on a Tuesday, so which is which really unusual. Right. Um, there was something with family traveling, and they just they really wanted it on that day. So I, after the 8.30, we had a baptism. Following that, I had a funeral. <laughs> then I had, um, I was training the new altar servers that day as well. Um, and then after that was finished, we had the CCD kids um, come over for confessions. And then I um, got a quick bite to dinner, and then I had a drive to my, where I was assigned as a deacon to Mary, Mother the Redeemer. I was invited to preach the 40 hours there this year, so I went all the way up there for the closing of 40 hours. So that's an unusual day, but certainly an example of, of what a busy day could look like. Yeah, one that really um, exemplifies, you know, the spectrum of a priest. Sure. Um, so what are some ways that the seminary prepared you for, for days like that, the busyness and the, the craziness? Um, again, I would say just that, that practice of getting up early and making prayer the priority, sort of building the, the, the day on the foundation of prayer was something I started here um, and something that I noticed in some of the other priests here and some of my, um, my classmates, brother seminarians who were doing the same thing. I found that to be particularly useful in the priesthood. Um, I also feel that, um, our, and I'm not just saying this because we're in Father Brady's office, but the scripture classes, um, I refer to my notes from, from all my uh, scripture classes, in particular the Gospels, when I'm preparing for homilies, uh, more often than, than you'd think. Um, I certainly use other resources, but yeah. I do refer back to them a lot, um, and I found them to be very helpful and practical. So I mentioned before that you know you were ordained in 2020, which, uh, as we all know, was the year of the pandemic. Um, so your 
ordination day was postponed. Was, is that correct? Yes. The original date was supposed to be May 16th, which was the traditional date in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, the third Saturday in May, um, when we hold ordinations to the priesthood. So that was supposed to be the date. Okay. And it was postponed to June 20th. Yeah. But um, as far as my own personal preparation for the priesthood during that time, again, um, it was a struggle because I had, I was really prepared for May 16th. And there was a point in time where we weren't sure um, if it was still going to be on May 16th, regardless of uh, what the situation was. And so there was a lot of questions going around, um, a lot of uncertainty as to whether um, it would be on that date. And if it was on that date, who would be permitted to be there? Uh, would it simply just be the ordinandi and the bishop um, and maybe a few assistants? Um, would our parents be allowed to come? Yeah. Um, you know, like that was, those were all questions that were on our minds. So in a way, um, there was a point where I, my heart was prepared for kind of the worst case scenario. And, and I was ready to be ordained on May 16th, uh, regardless of who, who could be there. Mm -hmm. I had really hoped that my parents would be able to be there. And, of course, right. Um, but initially I had invited like 300 people or something like that. So going from 300 to maybe two and being okay with it um, was definitely a big, you know, a progression. Yeah. So eventually um, we had entered the green phase in June 20th, uh, by June 20th, and they had moved the date and we were permitted 50 people. So I was happy as a clam, you know, at that point that we were allowed just, you know, just 50. Yeah. So, but it was it was challenging at times. There was a lot of uh, surrender that needed to be done on my part, um, but it certainly made me appreciate the sacrament in itself and what really was taking place there. Because all of the other celebratory things that that usually surround an ordination, which are good things, were really stripped at that time. So it was um, a, it was frustrating but it became easier to focus on, on really what was important. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So obviously that was a, a very challenging moment for you um, before the priesthood. Has there been a moment that comes to mind that you can think of um, within the priesthood that's been, been challenging for you? There, there have been uh, a few challenges. I'd say the hardest thing I've had to do since being ordained a priest was uh, bury my grandfather. Uh, he had died last in April, this past April, and um, it was very sudden uh, to our family. He wasn't sick. It was He had a massive stroke, and um, I remember being at the parish. I was in the office working on other things and getting a call that he had been rushed to the hospital, and he wasn't really expected to recover from this. Right. And so um, I quick got in my car and went uh, to anoint him. Um, there were still, um, this was sort of a humorous moment in it all, when, I mean, in Chester County, every time we would go to the local hospital to visit someone, there's all sorts of restrictions, and we've got to go through this whole song and a dance yes. for, um, you know, for, for safety reasons. Um, now, he was, I'm from Northeast Philly, so they were in the city. And uh, I walked into that hospital. They're like, hey, Father, come on in. You know, it was like, no, <laughs> I didn't have to do any screening or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I had gone up, gave him the uh, final blessing, and prepared him to meet the Lord, which was a great honor and, and a privilege and also very overwhelming and emotional. Um, and then uh, the hardest part of that was then giving the homily at his funeral. Yeah. Um, it was a beautiful mass. For, for everything about that Mass, except the homily, I felt a great peace and strength um, that wasn't coming from me um, that allowed me to, to act in the person of Christ in that moment. The homily, I was a mess, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that was definitely the, the um, most difficult thing I've had to do, most challenging so far. Yeah, that, yeah that's, I can imagine that's, that's pretty, uh, got to be pretty tough. Um, before we end, though, we should end on a happy note, I think. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. <laughs> so what has been your favorite moment in, of being a priest? In general, um, I enjoy celebrating the sacraments um, just across the board. 
uh, the especially hearing confessions, the humility that people have, just the 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 absolute trust that they place in you, uh, and in many cases, um, people don't don't know me, um, but will pour their hearts out because they know that it's Christ who's listening uh, through me and absolving them through me. So that's a very powerful experience. I expected it to be that way, um, but again, it's just something. That, um, even taking the classes here at the seminary and uh, doing mock confessions and all that stuff, it doesn't add up. You know, yeah. it doesn't doesn't compare to the real thing. So, in general, I I really do favor celebrating the sacraments. Uh, but one, if you just to give a specific moment of uh, what was at I think first perceived as a as a challenge, um, ended up being a, a great blessing. Uh, the first Mass I celebrated for Christmas uh, was a Vigil Mass, and um, we had added all these Masses uh, because we weren't sure what the crowds would be like, and uh, we had to make sure that there was enough room for people to social distance. And um, So there was all of that um, just kind of in the background, trying to, to plan for all that and make sure everyone was comfortable coming to church. So if that wasn't a big, a big enough task as it, as it was, the power went out <laughs> during in the middle of my mass. So um, we had quick got you know every candle that we could find and placed them all over the altar and you know uh, so that I could continue celebrating mass. And people loved it. I mean, you'd think they'd be complaining or something like that. But it really was like a, a, a very beautiful moment. Uh, someone had taken a picture of it. And um, it's just, you know, mass by candlelight. It was very um, simple, quiet. They couldn't, con you know, the, the microphones were out, the, so the organ wasn't working, you know, all those things. So people were just singing the hymns um, from memory and without uh, any accompaniment. It was, you know, it felt, you know, very, uh, very sacred in its simplicity. So I'll, I'll always remember that, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But... Uh, definitely a, a high point. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that sounds that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, so that is all for today. Um, thank you again for watching, and thanks to, to Father Monica for joining us. Um, join us again next time as we continue to get to know the people, places, and events of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia.